Hi everyone, today we are gonna replace the trackball, the buttons, and the joystick top in this Legends Pinball Arcade Control Panel, similar to what I've done with my Superman themed panel here. So give me a few minutes here to get this unboxed and we'll get started. After you unbox everything, um, make sure that you hang on to all the packaging. Sometimes it comes in handy, like in this case here, we could use it as a bench. So when we pull the screws out and everything else, it's not wobbling all over the place. Make sure that you pull the tape off the haptic feedback plug there. Uh, otherwise it might be a little difficult to get the plastic piece off. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the screws now. I'll spare you watching me pull all these uh, in the video. Once we get the panel off, we'll move on to the next steps here. With the plastic off, we can get started. One thing I do wanna point out is when you pull the plastic cover and you start changing parts, you're voiding your warranty. So keep that in mind as you start making changes. So the, I'm gonna start with the first thing here, which is probably the easiest thing, and that's replacing the joystick ball. It's really simple to do. Basically all we're gonna do here is kind of put it on its side. We're gonna take our screwdriver, we're gonna put it in the slot, and then we're going to hold it tight and turn the joystick ball. Once it's loose, you can hold it down, spin it off. Um, if you want, you can even replace the, the dust covers. We're gonna keep the dust cover at this point right now. We're gonna take the yellow ball, put it on there, get it nice and tight. I'm holding my finger on the back of it so it doesn't spin on me. Once the joystick starts to spin, you can get your screwdriver back in there like that. Give the joystick a little bit of a twist till it's snug and you're done. That's the probably easiest thing we're gonna do today. Next, we'll move on to replacing buttons. Okay, so now we're ready to get to work on the buttons. My suggestion would be to get a label maker of some sort, like this brother here, and create some labels and label these up as you're pulling them apart. It'll make it easier if you need to replace a button in the future, uh, or if you decide to skin the top. Uh, for any number of reasons, it's a lot easier to just have everything labeled. Um, another trick, if you would, is writing the layout down before you get started. It'll keep you from having to flip this back and forth to check the button layout for each one that you pull. I suffer from CRS, I can't remember stuff. So this makes the job move along a lot quicker. Um, these can be a little tough to pull off. Uh, you gotta kind of get your nails in there and just give it a push. But once you give it a push, this should come back. There's a little tab. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little tab right here that if you push down and pull, these come right off. So nice and easy. We're gonna pull the first one here. I'm gonna label it up and then I'll show you how to get the other pieces out. So let's just get this done real quick. I'll pause while I label and then I'll show you how to pop this. And eh, we'll do it now. We'll pop this piece out here. I just use again, a small screwdriver you pop this up. Now, one thing that you guys might want to grab also are one of these button tighteners. It makes it a lot easier to pull these apart. Just make sure you get the right side on there, lock it down, give it a twist. It's loosened up enough. Once it's loosened up, pop it off. You can spin that and there's our first button out. But again, make sure you label everything as you're moving along so you don't get confused. I'll get the rest of these pulled out and then I'll show you what to do next. As I was pulling the buttons, I figured I'd show you another trick, whatever is easy, easier for you. You can always pop these out to pull this out of the way to give you some more room to work. Again, 
work on pulling this rubber piece back. Put your screwdriver in that little pin right there. Just like that. Then you just give it a little pull and it comes right off nice and easy. I'll continue to remove the buttons and then we'll get started with adding in the replacements. So with the buttons out now we can get started. But I wanted to cover why people like to replace buttons. For me, it's the clickiness. This drives me crazy. Other people experience latency. I personally have never had to deal with that. Uh, when people rep replace their buttons, some people like to use these gold leaf type, but I'm not a fan of having to cut brand new wiring to accommodate a new kind of button. These ones from Ultimark here, which we'll be using today, you can get them on eBay. You can get them through their website if you want, if you want to more, order more than uh, one or two. But uh, we'll get this repositioned and then we'll get started with installing some buttons. Okay, with the control panel repositioned, we're ready to start doing the button install. Please remember CZ, BY, AX. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the A button first, nice and easy. Put it through the control panel, hold it tight with your finger, spin this down, lock it down, get it in position. I like to crank them down as hard as I can with my hand and then just give it a quarter turn to lock it in place. Then dig up your wiring here. In this case, here's the A button. Pop them in, try to get them to click. And once you get these popped on, make sure that when you're putting them in position that you'll be able to access the pin if you ever need to pull these apart. Get them in place, lock them down, then move your rubber pieces down and once that's done, you're done. I'll spare you watching me do the rest of these on camera. We'll come back when I'm done so you can see what the layout looks like when it's finished. Okay, all the buttons are done. Everything's wired. You can see all the labels here. I highly recommend doing that. It's a good backup just in case you forget and you should always have a backup. We're going to be moving on to the trackball now. I'm going to get things repositioned so the trackball area is centered and we can get started. Replacing the trackball. I had many recommendations when it came to what to replace the ball with. Somebody recommended this one here, which is really cool, but the problem is, is it's made of stone. It's heavy. It broke my trackball system. So that one, out. These guys I got from Dubai online. Uh, they're 2.5 inch acrylic juggling balls. These are just about the same weight, almost perfect. Problem was 2.5 isn't always 2.5. This guy here from DS Juggling, which I got on Amazon, is also 2.5 inches or 63.5 millimeters. And this one fits perfectly. So. If you want something with a little bit of color, a little bit different, like the Dubais, um, certainly you can use these, but you're gonna have to modify the cup a little bit. Uh, we'll go through that as we move along. Um, what I do recommend though, if you're going to put anything other than the stock trackball into the cup, you install the shims. These you can get online. I think they're seven or eight bucks. Link will be in the description. Link will be in the description for the, the acrylic balls as well. But I highly recommend if you're replacing the track ball that you put the shim system in to give it some support. We'll get these installed as all part of the process here. But first things first, we're gonna pull these four screws so we can get to the track ball system underneath. With the screws removed, we can get started on the next step, but I wanted to call your attention to these two little pins right here. They're pretty delicate, so be careful when you're pulling this all apart that you don't snap them. 
pulling this away, the next thing we need to do is get to these screws right here. They hold the ring in place that locks the ball into the socket here. So we need to pop this piece out in order to get the ball out. So we're gonna flip this back over, we'll get the screws removed, and we'll move on to the next step. When pulling the screws, you're gonna need a smaller type screwdriver. Just wanted to point that out. So you're gonna get in there and then just keep turning. It takes a little while to get this done because the screws are kind of longer, but once you feel it start to kind of pop, then you know that, the, that they're loose. But again, I hate having to do this kind of work on camera because I find it kind of boring. Plus my fat fingers are in the way and that uh, keeps you from seeing actually what we're doing. But at this point, these should be pretty much locked down. So now we can pop the ball out. There you go, the ball is free which gives us access to the cup. Just be careful not to lose the screws. So now we can kind of move on to the next step with either putting in that trackball that fits nice and easy or one of these other ones that will require you to kind of drop the cup and, and make some modifications to get this trackball to actually fit. But before you do any of that, again, I, rem I recommend that you put the shim kit in so you can help avoid damaging the interior part of the cup system. We'll go ahead and do that next. With the screws removed, the last thing we need to do is pull this, this pin. What you're gonna wanna do is get your fingernail underneath it, uh, if it's glued in and it's locked down tight, you can take a hair dryer, but all you need to do is just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Of course, don't pull on the wires. You don't want to ruin the wires. Now that that's out, we need to get to the four screws that are in here so we can pull this top off and get to the mechanisms so we can install the shim kit. I'll get everything moved out of the way and we'll move on to the next step. All right, same thing as before. Screws can be a little deep here. All you gotta do, get in there, unscrew them, and this cup will come apart. Again, I'll spare you watching me unscrew everything. Once I get it apart, we'll move on to the next step of getting those shims installed. With the screws loosened, we can just lift the cup off which exposes all the rollers and everything else. Next, we'll get the shim kit laid out so we can get all the pieces installed. Now we'll go ahead and install the shim kit. You'll lay them out. They have instructions on their site. If you decide to purchase it, I'll put a link to them. Easy enough to lay out. They go in really easy. So kind of like so. I'll spare you you know, having to watch me do the full installation. But one thing to note is this roller needs to come out in order to fit this piece in. We'll come back when everything's finished so you can see what it looks like when it's done. As you can see, all the shims are now in place, but I wanted to review reinstalling the roller. It doesn't snap in or anything like that. It doesn't click. It just simply lays back into the assembly. Double check, make sure it spins freely and you're good to go. The next step is then reinstalling the top. After that, we'll discuss what you need to do depending on what juggling ball that you use for the installation of the track ball. The track ball. So what do we do here? This DS juggling acrylic ball fits perfectly, right? We've got plenty of room, spins real nice, spins just as well as the stock trackball. Um, so if you wanna go with this, it's great. No modifications needed. However, if you go with the Dubé juggling balls, um, you know, again, Superman theme, so 
blue for a suit, green for kryptonite, red for the sun, whatever. But if you notice, it's a little bit tighter around the edge there. Still spins great. I mean, it's perfect, but it's a little bit tighter, a little bit bigger. So what do we do? We use two to three number 10 washers. It all depends on the thickness of the rubber on the control panel in and of itself. So putting two of these in on the sides here gives you enough room to use a slightly larger ball uh, and keeps the lockdown piece from tightening so much that the ball doesn't fit. So that's ultimately the goal because once you screw it down, you can't spin it. So to avoid that, we put these shims in or these washers as shims and it'll allow the ball, uh, the ball to roll a lot better. So I'll get everything set up here. I'll get this screwed into place and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so you can see that I put the washers in for my shims here. When you reinstall, make sure that the connector is facing up that's how it was when we removed everything. I'll go ahead and pause here. I'll get everything screwed in and then we'll move on to the next step. So if you're locking everything down and your washers shift, just wanna give you a little pro tip here. Get one of your smaller screwdrivers. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's a little out of whack. Put a small screwdriver in there, move it around a little bit, shift it, get it into place. Then huh, get your screw in there. Then you can get it started with the small screwdriver and then use something with a little leverage to lock it down tighter. Next, we'll flip everything over. We'll get the ball installed. We'll get this into place and we'll talk about screwing things down. So after a couple different setups here, I found out that the magic number for this was actually four washers. Um, which is kind of odd, I've never had that happen before, which required me to add some longer screws. We use these number 10 three quarter inch screws because after three, the stock screws don't work. They're too short. But as you can see, everything works great, sounds good. Now, the next step, if this is what you want to do with your setup, it would be to add LED lighting as I did before. Um, I am missing the controller piece uh, for this, but we could certainly review the process on one that I have already finished. We can go ahead and do that. Let me get the other one in place. We'll get it disassembled and I'll show you the next steps there. So here's the control panel that is in my ALP 4K. Um, we have the U-Track RGB LED panel kit installed from Arcade Renovations. Link will be in the description. Uh, so first things first, the LED panel. Uh, I took this and I put it off center. When I was testing this all out, I found if we put this in the center, it was firing straight up through the trackball and hitting you directly in the eyes. Having it off center keeps it from shining directly into your eyes and uh, kind of dulls it down a little bit so it's not so bright and in your eyes. Um, moving on, we have the LED controller kit. When you're installing it, make sure that the white wire is pointing to the red triangle here. You don't want to install this improperly because if you do, you have the possibility of shorting out the control panel. It also comes with the power supply and a remote. So let's get this fired up here. So as you can see here, and I'm not gonna shine it up directly at you, but as you can see, we can change colors on it. Whoop, huh, there you go. You can change colors on it. You can even make it bright white. So like that red track ball that I have, um, it'll shine nice and uh, bright in that red color. Um, obviously you can turn it off as well, um, but again, this is a, my setup. You might want to do something a little bit different um, as far as wiring it up and trying to keep it neat and tucked in tight. What I did was I just zip tied it, 
And then with this screwed down, you could tuck it in here. I take a little gaffer's tape like this, just to kind of keep it in place. Um, this I would suggest taping up so it doesn't pull apart when it's inside. Now I don't use the exciters. I don't like the vibration on the control panel. So I take the sensor and I have it sitting right here so I can utilize the remote to change the colors, turn it on and off, that sort of thing. But gaffer's tape does wonders uh, as far as keeping things into place and it's not like duct tape. So you don't get that residue that's left behind. Uh, pretty much that's it when it comes to uh, the control panel here. Uh, if you like this, please like, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll have another tutorial soon. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Take care.